Hi, my name is Sebastian from Green Music Productions, and this is Visco. Visco is a beat maker, sound design tool, and live performance drum machine uh, that can model and manipulate any sample that you throw at it. So it's freeing you from the usual limitations of working with recorded audio. It has eight tracks, mainly focusing on drum style samples, but these are not actually samples. You can import your own samples into the different tracks and it will recreate them and allow you to manipulate them in a way that a usual audio samples would not be able to do so. So it has also two banks that you can load at one of eight tracks and you can morph between the two banks in real time, modulate or automate uh, that morph slider right here. Kind of like what you can do with the Electron Octatrack. It also has what they call a blob right in the middle that you can manipulate by just playing with the blob and changing the sound. You can also flip the blob. More about this a little bit later. And you have some macro knobs that allows you to transform all of the tracks at once. So this is basically the same as moving the slider between the two banks. You also have a timescale knob. This allows you to make it snappier or add more sustain. There's a frequency knob. That allows you to pitch up or down all the samples at once. Keep in mind that you can still morph between the two banks and they will be affected by those macros. The contrast macro will emphasize the specific characteristics of those sounds. So I can make them more prominent or the opposite. density knob will play with the noise aspect or tonal aspect of the sound. Now over here we have the same controls as the macros but per track. So if I solo just the kick I can play with the time scale, the frequency, the contrast, or the density separately. You can also decide if you want variations in your sound. If you set it to frozen, it's always going to give you the exact same sound. But if you put it to free and change the seed, it will give you a bit of variation on that sound as you play with different velocities and things like that. You can also set some polyphony for super long uh, sound that could be helpful if you want to trigger multiple ones at the same time, they will overlap with a release and a damping that will affect the high frequencies in a natural way. And you also have some dynamics that can affect different things. So I can set the dynamics so that the more dynamics I play, the more dynamics I have, so the harder I play the notes, it will play with the transform uh, slider right there. Uh, same with time scale, contrast, and different things. So it is really powerful, and as I stated earlier, you can use some different tools to play with the blob. can get crazy uh, but you have some undos and redos if you're not happy with what you just did. Uh, there's also a magnet tool instead of dragging the blob you can click somewhere and it will drag the blob towards that direction so let's try it out. The 
Let's try something different. And you also have the eraser that does the opposite. You can flip the blob horizontally or vertically, giving you some really interesting results. And undo and redo. Now, this is great and it's super inspiring and easy to use. Now let's try to load my own sample and see how well it will recreate the sample. So I'll just press stop for now and I'll listen to some samples uh, that I have in Cubase. Let's try to load this one in the kick. So we can see that the blob moved around because it recreated the sample, so let's listen to it and compare it to the original. So it's really close. It's not perfect, but it's really close. It's doing a really good job at recreating the samples that you throw at it. Again, you can try different samples. They don't have to be drum samples, so you can get really creative with this. Now, since I loaded this, I can press play again, remove the solo on the kick, And I just replaced the kick drum for the first bank over here. A good thing that it has is a sequencer. And the sequencer is quite visual and easy to use while being powerful enough for you to not have to be super technical to understand. So if I press play, we can see that it's just playing a sequence that was already there. Let's try to load another preset. So presets comes with sequence that are already there, but there's no way to only load a different preset just for the sequencer itself. You have to change uh, the whole preset and it will come with its own sequence. So I would like to have a bank just of sequences but a really cool thing is you can randomize either the sound or the sequence and it's really musical in the way that it randomized the sequencer so let's try to play with the random sequence we'll keep the same sound for now So as you can see, it does a really good job at generating sequence that works well with a specific music track, for example. Now, if we clear all of the sequence by right-clicking anywhere and clicking on clear all, you have to be careful because I did that by mistake once and I didn't want to clear all of my stuff. We can focus on writing a sequence. So if I want a four on the floor, for example, I can load four kicks. You can manipulate the timing by going to the left side of the sample and moving it around so it's not tied to the exact steps. You can move them both ways, by the way. And you can also make it longer, snappier by dragging the right side of it. Now let's add this in the sequence. As you can see, it is really boring right now, but you can obviously play with the velocity manually. But you also have some values for the swing value. the timing, so it humanizes the timing, and the velocity. So 
So just like that, I made a really simple but quick beat that makes sense. As I said earlier, you can also just randomize them and you might get to a point where you really like a sequence and you can tweak the things that you don't like. You can remove any notes by double clicking on them. Now let's try to randomize both the sound and the sequence. So let's press play again. So let's say I like this. You can drag the export MIDI on your MIDI track. In this case, it's an instrument track and you get the MIDI file right there. So if I unlock the transport on Visco, it won't play the loop automatically when I press play, but it will rely on the MIDI. Now we have modulation. Uh, we have four different envelopes, four LFOs, and we have a, a modulation matrix. And we can modulate pretty much anything that we want in the plugin. So I can use, let's say, LFO1, which is this one right here, and I can modulate, uh, let's say, the global time scale. So if I press play, So as you can see, the macro for the time scale is moving with the LFO and we can see the graph move accordingly. Now we can do that for many different things. We can set amounts, we can go in the negative side of the amount, and we can also set scalers like the mud wheel, for example, of our MIDI controller, pitch band, aftertouch, and that. So it is really powerful and fun to use. It is instinctive and creative. I feel like I would like to see more presets to have some sequencer preset, but the fact that you can just export MIDI or use MIDI uh, makes it easier to just load your own MIDI beats, for example. And you also have a mix section where you can play with the filter, you can modulate them, and keep in mind that you can also set automations on pretty much all of those functions. So let's say again with the kick, I want to play with the filter. It's really easy to do. We have some clipping. We can play with the amp, make it louder, with the panning, with the width, so it sounds wider, and we also have sends. The sends are here, you can change the different effects, so we have chorus, diffuser, plate reverb, room reverb, spring reverb, tempo, delay, compressor, and stereo fuzz. So right now a chorus is loaded, so if I send it to the send one, and send to which is a plate, let's try to change the plate for a stereo fuzz. and change the chorus for a diffuser. I saw some people saying that there are not multiple outputs for the tracks, but that's not true. In Cubase, what we can do is go under the VSTi and we can right click on the VSTi itself and we have an option for activate outputs. So I will activate all outputs inside of Cubase. So by doing that, what happened is that Cubase created the output for the VSTi. They're in green over here in the mixer. But I have to assign them inside of Visco. So right now, they're all set to main here in the mix section again. But I can decide to set, let's say, the kick in bus 1, bus 2, bus 3, and so on. So now if I press play, 
they will all play on their specific track in the mix console. So I can mix them in Cubase separately, put my own plugins there, and everything is great. So you're not very limited by the main FX or the send FX that you can find inside of Visco. Even though they're really good, you have basically unlimited options by uh, setting the output to specific tracks and loading your own inserts. So Visco is really fun to use. For example, I mapped one of the button on my MIDI controller to play with the transform here so that it morph between the two sounds that I loaded. So let's press play again and switch different presets. So just by doing that, I feel like it's super inspiring. I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, please click the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. Bye.